What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, we are back. We are back. <laughs> uh, we back in the same spot again. Yes. What? Yeah. We might make this a habit. Hey. Oh man. Checks coming in. Oh, I love it. I will take it because I want a Mercedes Benz S uh, S five fifty uh, at the, uh, by December. You gonna get it? You gonna? I'm get on it. it. I don't, get, I don't want to uh, you know do a five finger discount at somebody uh, 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 expense. Uh, uh. I want to be able to do it myself. I ain't gonna bail you out. I ain't gonna bail you uh, out. That's why I don't want to do that because I know you ain't gonna bail me out. I'd be like, ah, Lakiba, come get Click. me. <laughs> Hello, hello. Right, like, was somebody calling? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, guys, welcome again to the Living Day by Day Show. Of course, I am your girl, Lakiba Wallace, aka the Boss. You ain't got to believe it, but I am the Boss. I'm so excited, guys, to be able to broadcast again to let you know that the Living Day by Day Show we still on, we still popping. Yep. Y'all know I don't be popping by myself. Hey. I pop with none other than celebrity. Comedian, what to do? E love in the building. Oh, what up, everybody? <laughs> it's your homeboy, uh, the ghetto man. Ghetto man. <laughs> yeah, she's a little girl, a ghetto girl, and I'm ghetto man. Uh, comedian Eric E love Jordan. I'm excited to be here, yes. and, and we got a special guest in the building. Woo! I don't know. We do, do we call her pastor, bishop, revenus? <laughs> Uh, she's she, 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 all the things. Come on in, Revenus. <laughs> Revenus, <laughs> yes. yes. So, who, who's our special guest, Miss Lakeba? Pastor Robin is what in the everybody? building. I'm yes. so happy to be with you guys. <laughs> Revenus, how you doing, Revenus? <laughs> Revenus is doing well. She's I, happy to be in yes. ATL from the Charlotte region. Ooh, yes. I love it. <laughs> She even, sound, she even sounded, sounded uh, it, it sounded street in the hood, but churchy. Churchy, <laughs> right. She was like, she didn't want to be like, she'll ah. put them scriptures on you now. She'll put that's them scriptures sad, on you. That's <laughs> God told me to let you know, take your mask off and don't smell your own breath. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God. But we're so excited, guys, to have Pastor Robin in the building because she's going to bring some balance to the room from a spiritual perspective. You know, sometimes E be sliding a little bit. You know, E be sliding. E be sliding. No, no, no. no. E be sliding. I got to get some backup in the room just in case something go left. I got to drag it back right again. So, (laughs) why you always blame me for what direction we go when you know you just as ghetto as me? I just say what you don't want to say, you, but you be thinking I'll be it. I'm my ghetto. You think what, I, and I just say it. I don't care. I say it, but you be thinking it. He so, be like, yo, we go wrong. Exactly. So. <laughs> Uh, oh my God, God is so good. But y'all know I yeah. always like to start the show out with a motivational moment because okay. we all need to be motivated. And this scripture is really near and dear to me, and I know it's going to help somebody out there. Where I'm coming from, as the pastor say, I'll be coming from (laughs) the book of... He's coming from the book of. I'll be coming from the book of the book of Matthew. Open your Bibles. Open right your Bibles. Or open your phone. Whatever you open need to do. Phone, open your Bibles. Open your laptops. We got a minute We got a minute Five and forty-four. Come on with it, E. So yes. it says, "But I say unto you, mm-hmm. love your enemies, bless them that curse you, okay. do good to them that hate you, mm. and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you." Mm. Let me break that down. Oh, so in oh. other words, it means you don't have to pay back your haters or your enemies because okay. God got that. God wants you to be kind to your enemies. Okay. He wants you to bless your enemies. Believe it or not, mm-hmm. he wants you to bless all your haters out there because God is saying, I got this. I don't need you to be slapping nobody. I don't need you to be spitting on nobody, even though we, that's in the Bible about the spitting, but we ain't going to be spitting on nobody. He's you know, some God guys. say he, he play on it. got it. <laughs> he don't want you to do none of that because let me tell you this. There is power in forgiveness. So you have to forgive your enemies. You have to pray for your enemies. You have Absolutely. to do these things in order for you to get the power because guess okay. what? When you do not do that, you drain yourself of the ability to walk in power. Yeah. You drain yourself of the ability to really be blessed mm-hmm. and get all those things that God has for you. So again, there is power in forgiveness. Well, and, I, if you, if forgiveness is not for the other person. The forgiveness is for you. absolutely. What, the, you know, what did he say that? Wait a minute. Get that. Get that. I, I just I knew because I hated everybody in high school. Uh, what up? Shout out to everybody in high school. Uh, but I don't condone I don't condone violence, but I understood. Um, because you know people people say stuff and say thing they mean, and you know you be like I want to go with a black trench coat and kill everybody. Oh, oh, no. But I was like, you know what? I got to be going left. I got to repent. I got to 
I, I repented and I forgave. <laughs> um, and, you know, and I, I, but I didn't forget. Don't act, don't walk up to me to my hey, uh, you the same one that did such and such. I didn't forget, but I forgave you though. In my mind, I ain't had to tell you, but this is for me. Awesome. Absolutely. So shout out to the class of '89. Love y'all. <laughs> The Big D Douglas High School. Woo-woo. I don't like none of y'all. I'm just playing. No, Stop I'm, just playing. I'm just playing. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. But really important, like, you know, when I was preparing this, when God gave me Matthew 5 and 44, he gave me uh, three words, like okay. forgiveness plus blessings equal mm. power. Oh. So when you begin to forgive, you start to walk into so many different blessings. And then you you really start to begin to get what we call that dunamis power. Absolutely. Mm. That power that is so like the highest power okay. ever. And so I just want to encourage y'all. I know Pastor Robin's probably going to jump in here that you have to make sure that you are praying for your enemies and that you are blessing your enemies. And I told someone recently, God, you know, really instructed me to to financially bless somebody. Oh, he told and me that. Um, somebody that I know don't really care for he, me. He and, did not um, tell me to get somebody some money. That <laughs> but I it worked like. for my good. Ooh, it's Lord, working Jesus, for my good. Absolutely. Uh, he did not tell me that. It's at all. Oh my God! I ain't on that level. <laughs> I am not on that level with Jesus. No, he ain't gonna tell me no money. No, he ain't gonna give me no money. He told me to not get. Um, I cringe when he told me to tell these two white officers to uh, have a great day. He said, "Tell them to have." God said, "Ah, Jesus, that is the devil." Mm-mm, these white cops killing all these black men. You want me to go to two white cops? In you this you white sound town? a little disgruntled. Listen, no, we, I, we need I, to forget. I sat in the van. I sat in my car for twenty minutes and having an the- argument with God. Uh, he was like, "I need you to go over there." And, and I heard it clear as day. No, this is a true story. He said, "I was about to get." He said, "Hey, uh, go over there and tell those cops be blessed and have a great day." I said, "That ain't you, God." I looked around like see if somebody else in my car. He said, "I said, go over them." Tell those two cops to have a great day. So I sat in the car and hopefully they would drive off. <laughs> and 20 minutes later, they were still sitting there talking. And I was like, Ugh. Oh my God, God. Yes, with me. Yes, so I went over there and said, Hey, um, what up? What up, fool? Uh, what up, y'all? How you doing? Um, and they were like, How can we help you? I was like, uh, Y'all. Y'all be blessed and have a good day. <laughs> you're like, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I was like, you too. You, yeah, you too. <laughs> I did what you said. I ain't gonna get swallowed by a whale by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Pastor Robin? Because we still praying. We still praying for E. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen, yeah. you write on 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 key about forgiveness and the power yeah. that you get out Absolutely. of forgiving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, releasing releasing that anger, that bitterness. Yes. You know, Absolutely. and allowing God to just yeah. um, f- refresh you. You know, yeah. your mind and transform your thinking, mm-hmm. and the weight of that whatever happened no longer is weighing on you. You know. Right. So it is definitely a power in a allowing God to do that, you know, that work in you yeah. and allowing you to be free from that mm-hmm. trauma, that pain. I love that. And and just be released to walk. And yeah. that's what I love about understanding forgiveness. It is all about you. Awesome. It's all about you. I love that. And I'm going to tell you this and we're going to move on. So I can remember many years ago when I was just going through just so much hatred and just, you know, bitterness and just, you know, not really wanting to deal with anybody whatsoever. And God began to minister to me and talk to me about the pipe of unforgiveness. Wow. And so I was like, God, what is the pipe of unforgiveness? And God said, you know, just imagine a pipe. And when you look through that pipe, everything that you are holding it's all in the pipe and it's cluttered. So you can't see to the blessings on the other side. Wow. Because you have the pipe of unforgiveness. But when you switch that, he is listening. (laughs) When you switch that and you go to the pipe of forgiveness, now you got a free running flow. Wow. And God is just, all those blessings are just running through. You can begin to see the blessings in the pipe and you can begin to see the blessings on the other side. On the other side. And that helped me so much. It helped me so much because that's a great That sounds like a blunt. I'm not going to do that. Oh, (laughs) You smoked it. <laughs> now you can see clearly. <laughs> I can see clearly now. That ain't me, God. Uh-uh. Listen, God forgive me. Lord, I can see help clearly us. Now. Help us. Thank help you, us. Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> this is Jesus Puff Puff Give Give Class 101. This oh, is the Lord. Puff Puff Pipe. <laughs> <laughs> the Puff Puff Pipe Pipe of Blessing. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Anything you act and you do bad, just say Jesus' name. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. 
<laughs> he corrects you like, oh, you got on my nerves, you son of a... Uh-uh, Jesus name. we ain't doing that. Uh, we ain't doing that. Nah. We ain't doing that. Pastor, pastor, that don't work. That don't work, uh, baby. That don't work. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Well, first of all, I know you're a pastor, so you know you know scripture. Listen. Some of them, some of them deacons that uh, Jesus walked with, they cuss. So I, just, I know for a fact up. One of them, he was a fisherman, and he had, he carried him a sword. That's a... That's a if, the, if he was one of the... Uh, <laughs> the disciples. The disciples right now, that means he was packing a nine. Look, so he, uh, yeah, he, he was he packing... He had a nine millimeter in my eye. I just saw a mother suck a wood. Uh-huh. Listen. Listen. Uh, Pastor Robert, look, don't feed look, into look. it. Don't I, I'm not in it. Don't I'm feed not into in it. it. We're going to jump to the next no, segment. Don't feed into it. You want to jump into the next segment? Don't feed into it. You want to jump no, into it? Don't feed into it. 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 Don't What's next, E? <laughs> All right, so uh, what well, we actually we're gonna, what we're gonna do? We getting ready to go right now into <laughs> we got uh, what what are we doing with you? What's in the news? What's in the news with the Kibo? I what? love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what you got for first, what's in the news? First thing I want to say is happy belated Father's Day to all of the fathers yeah. that are out yeah. there. All the so daddies. And, um, Shout out I, to the one hour Father's Day get. Mother's Day is like a whole marathon. Uh-huh. Father's Day is like a blip. It's like happy fa- <laughs> well, we, we celebrate. We what celebrate up, y'all. We acknowledge you. Again, happy belated Father's Day to all the fathers yes. out there. But let's get into some hot and heavy news. Okay, what you got? Lala Anthony files for divorce. Again? She <laughs> says she is tired of her NBA star husband by the name of Carmelo Anthony after they, they 11 were, years of They were already marriage, divorced. They were not divorced. They were just separated. Oh, okay, it's a difference. They were separated. Okay, it's a difference. There's a difference. In the paper. In the paper. In the paper. There's a difference. There's a difference. I wonder, did they sign a prenup? Or did but, she get them coins? But, you know, one thing I will say I is like... She got, coins, own, she got her own money, so she's not worried. But they were married for 11 years. Like, what could have happened? Why COVID. y'all couldn't have tried to... COVID. You know, no, they had some problems prior to no, COVID. No, no, no. Yeah. No, they were yeah, trying to work yeah. it out, and they they were together during <laughs> COVID. Long. That was the wrong time to try to work it out. You should have worked it out pre-COVID or waited. <laughs> right. So they married in 2010. They separated yeah. in, in April of 2017. Yeah. But they just could not make things work. Some people are just but, good to be friends. You know, mm. you, Everybody ain't got to be married. It's okay. I mean, you know, I know people want to stay together and you want to maybe try to do it for the kids or do it because, you know, it's more financial stable. No, nah, don't do that. Yeah. If, 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 it, if it ain't working, what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, if it's broke, let it go. <laughs> so, <laughs> if it ain't working, it ain't working. It's okay. But, you know, yeah. you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You ain't the first couple that ever broke up or got a divorce. You ain't going to probably won't be the last. So it's going to be all right. As long as you are there for your children, as long as you're there to uh, cohabit and, and, and be make everything good for them. So they don't have to, may not see a stable where there's a mama and dad in the household. Right. But they know that my mama love me. And my daddy loved me. They're there to support me mm-hmm. and help me be an individual and help me grow. But do you think it really affects the kids, though? Or, well, in this case, they have one child. Well, they divorce, have one child so. divorce affects everybody. Absolutely. Because you now you got to pick teams. You got to say who you're going to be with, who who, you, who house go where, who your friends going to be with, friends with what. But it's all about, when I think about separation and divorce, you got to remember, you say, okay, we're going to be, we got to be amicable. We got to make, uh, that's the word, it's a new word. Uh, you got to make sure that you are, it's you new know, for him, it's it new for him. It's it's new, yeah. You got to make sure that you, you you know, you're not being spiteful, you're not being right. mean, you know, right. you can't, you can't, not, best for the yeah, kids, you can't yeah. be now like, okay, now I can say what I really want to say about you. No, you know, don't do that in front of your children or do that even in front of other people because people take on whatever you have. Absolutely. You know, if I, if I talk bad about you over and over again right. and I forgave you, but the people I was talking bad about you ain't forgave you. They don't they, know that. That's they don't all they remember. That. Yeah. That's all they know. And then you walk around like, hey, everybody, like, mm, that's that girl that did mm-hmm. something. So they don't like you. Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you can't do that. But, you know, I really, you know, and I'm not for divorce, but I really commend Lala because, I mean, Lala, a bad chick. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, she's beautiful. She's talented. She's doing her thing in the media well, industry. 
Uh, Lala is beautiful and talented, but mm-hmm. I know those no, are I'm not saying she's not that... beautiful and talented. But we ain't, we ain't been around her all day long, so what? Right? She might. It's something else might be going on. You know, attitude or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But when you look at her, when on the outside we're looking in, she is talented. She is, you know, doing her thing. She's in all different movies. Right. She is doing right. her thing in power she and all bad. that kind of stuff. She's and a bad woman. She's a bad chick. And I yeah. will say this, you know, I, she tried to work it out with Carmelo. Rumor has it he has another kid somewhere. Well, from what I understand, so like, come on now, that that real now we all make mistakes, but why are we going outside the marriage? Like, I've, you already I, have a kid with Lala. If you wanted another kid, y'all could have worked that out. Why do you jump over and then start another family with somebody else? That part I can't get. And I like Carmelo. Don't get me wrong, right. but I'm, I'm well, all for what only, Lala did. As the only other gentleman in the room, uh, besides. Uh, our Arms. producer Geo, um, I'm gonna speak on that. Uh, but yeah, because me and our um, horn dogs, we're stupid, <laughs> and uh, and we will we will do anything that have two legs and a heartbeat. So if you're, uh, if, you know, you your ego is not being stroked <laughs> the right way, you will, and you know, because we we will play to our own devices. We'll do it because we'll, we're, we're stupid, and we'll do stupid <laughs> stuff. We just that, that's what that's a dude. Dude, dudes are stupid. We'll do stupid stuff, and we'll say stupid <laughs> stuff, and that's just how it is. That's how we're gonna be. When and, and nobody can change my mind on that. But so you in agreement with Lala filing for a divorce? Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. She says she done. No, she, I mean, but, but, but whole thing about it is that you know if you're not gonna. If once a woman, a woman once she felt disrespect, she had already filed divorce like uh, eight months, mind. yeah, uh-huh. eight months ago before they would decide that she had already said we 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 through. She just hugging them to see if she can get a better house or uh, <laughs> uh, some more cars or something, or you know she said um, I Lala need to, paper down. She I, ain't worried about no, no, she she pay, she, like she, Carmelo's she, she money. I down, promise you. <laughs> but a woman has a, she put, she works out her exit strategy. Mm-hmm. A dude be like this: I'm packing my bag. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just gonna pack. I'm going. Mm-hmm. We did this. I be sleeping in my car, but I'm out of here. <laughs> That's how stupid we are. We'll go sleep in a van or car. Our friends flow. Women be like, "No, I'm gonna stack my paper." Uh, and then this year, out of the blue, come and say, "Hey, we need to talk." <laughs> Me and the keys leaving you. And you're like, "What? Uh, what? I thought we were working." It. No, that was eight months ago. She had already made in her mind that she. About well, to shout out to uh, Lala and yep. um, Carmelo. I mean, I, I hope y'all. I wish y'all could have worked it out, but peace and blessings. But to you the never. Two of you, but you so. know what? You can never say never. Absolutely. They don't broke mm-hmm. up. They don't broke up and got back together. She don't mm-hmm. broke up. She I really pop- hope they get back together because I think they're both a, a, a powerful individually and then a powerful. Carmelo, go put them back in well. basketball shorts on and, and, and that shirt and, and walk around in front of her. She'll take Moving it on to prison reform project. <laughs> <laughs> A a new, a, that's how she got that's how he got it. <laughs> a new movement called the Prison Reform Project has officially okay. launched to help bring national attention to thousands of innocent black prisoners who have Ooh. been wrongfully convicted. That's what's up. According hey, to statistics, black men in prison, they go for petty crimes. Crimes uh, yeah. like possession of marijuana, which is now legal 25 in, years. in many states. Mm-hmm. You know. And so our organizational founder uh, and director, Mr. C. Beasley, states that his goal is to help newly released prisoners who are dealing with being homeless, jobless, oh, wow. and also faced with mental health issues. So the question on the table, will wrongful imprisonment ever stop? No. Probably no. not. No, because it's big money. It's, it's too big much, money. It's too much money. Dude, that's, that's cheap labor. Mm-hmm. That's Absolutely. a form of slavery. They they make license plates. They'll make you pies. I mean, Shawshank Redemption. They showed you a little glimpse of that, yeah. where a guy was like, "You, hey, uh, Warren, you know, you." They cutting down trees. He had a tree yeah. company. They doing the jail using prisoners. They can undercut that, and they don't pay the prisoners. They pay the prisoners three three pennies. Yeah, or a dollar. Yeah, and he was wow. like, "Hey, uh, Warren, can I please get this contract?" He said, "Well, I don't know." He said, "You know what? My wife made you a pie." And, and the pie had uh, all this money underneath it. And the warden looked at him and was like, you know, tell your wife, thank you for the pie. You know what? I don't think we need this contract. Mm-hmm. I think we good. Mm-hmm. And you said, yes, it's, it's a form of slavery. But here's wow. what I say, you know, and, and, and this is to, to anybody out there driving with weed, but especially black men, because I think black men are targeted more. You know, <sighs> if you already know that, that, that white police officers, you even.